can hear that beautiful sizzling sound of meat on the barbecue. I wish you could smell it too. I'm here with Chef Michael Ollier from Certified Angus Beef, and we want to get ready for the grilling season. Uh, anybody that's been outside has already feel like they've been grilled, but uh, what is the most important thing in terms of just choosing a cut of meat and why is Certified Angus the cut that you prefer? That is such a good question. I mean, when you're choosing a meat, so when I go to the meat counter at Meyer, I'm looking for an abundance of marbling within the lean. And that is the single most, single most important characteristic for quality beef. And for flavor. It is, and that's gonna give you the juiciness, the tenderness, is the marbling within the lean. Um, as far as, as, as Angus and what that means, Angus is a breed of cattle, and it's a perfect starting point for quality beef. But in real numbers, three in 10 of those cattle are gonna meet our brand because of our tight specifications. So in terms of your meat preparation, I notice you've got a little uh, little bowl here of salt and pepper. Is that yes. really all we need, or do you need some crushed garlic? What would you put on this beef before you throw it on the grill? In the end, it's anything that's going to complement beef that's going to be good for it. I'm a purist. I believe in just cracked pepper and coarse kosher salt. That's my go-to. Hey, if you like garlic, if you like onion powder, and you want to add some ancho chili pepper, whatever it is that you like, put it on there, but only if it enhances and not masks the flavor. But doesn't salt cause the meat to bleed, and wouldn't that get, get rid of some of those juices? Ah, very good question. Salt is, is, you're right, it will pull out moisture, but if you're going to go direct heat cooking, like a steak, either apply right before, or season it and give it an hour. You'll see the moisture will draw out, but then the moisture will go back in. You'll see the beads actually go back in and the salt will go with it and to season the steak. All right, in terms of what we need to do, I mean, we've all had that moment where we brought a beautiful steak off the grill. We go to cut it and we look at our, our, our cutting board and it looks like there's been a slaughter. And all, the, all those great juices have ended up on the cutting board instead of in our tummy. So how do we make sure that it stays inside the meat? That's, a, that's a, a common flaw is that we have that anticipation, we're salivating already and we want to eat that steak right away, but you really need to have patience. What happens is you, you, you need to give it time to redistribute, I'm talking about the moisture. Give it time to redistribute throughout the fibers, give it five to 10 minutes on a steak, and then you're gonna keep the juices within the cut and you're gonna be able to enjoy that with each bite. So let it coast, don't cut too quickly. Let it rest, give it time, be patient, it's worth it. Also, what about the temperature of the grill? Because there's this whole notion of searing, that if you sear the outside, that will hold the juices in as well. What should be the cooking temperature? I've, I've said, said 350, 400, and can we trust the thermometer on our grill? Yeah, that's a good question. I think it's, it's really about, you do want really high heat. High heat is important, but it's less about searing in juices than it is giving you that deep crust that you're looking for. That contrast of that crust to the tender, juicy inside, that's what our palates crave and salivate for in quality beef. It doesn't necessarily, the science does not support that it seals in juices. However, it's still a darn good thing to do and you should do it, sear it. So high heat, yeah, so I'm talking 450 or 500, I blaze my grill. But I also give myself a safe zone on my grill. I keep like a third of it off or a quarter of it off just so I, if I have a raging flare up, I have a safe zone to take that ribeye to. Okay, let's talk about those <laughs> flame ups. Is there a way to prevent them in the first place? Well, you should have a seasoned grill, okay? That's a that's good, and, and yes, so we tick it down about 400. Uh, if you have a flare up, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Just control it by getting some of that rendering fat away. It happens a lot with burgers. Do not ever press a burger because that creates flare ups. In terms of those of us that are a little lazy, that we don't use the briquettes, we use the propane, we still get flare-ups there, is it a good idea to have just a little something there to throw on the flare-up, or what, what should we do to try to beat it down? Oh, you're talking like, do I need an extinguisher nearby? <laughs> no, just I always, I always use the beer that I'm drinking, usually, oh, but, uh, that, which is a waste of good beer, but you know, what else should we do to try to prevent that, especially on a propane grill? Well, like I said, the safe zone, but also tick down your the heat so it goes lower and then pull those off so so pull your steaks so you don't get them um, charred because a sear is good but carbon and overly searing and creating carbon is bad. We, we should tell people that we're standing here in the WGR conference room so like a lot of places we can't have an open flame we can't have a barbecue a lot of folks that are apartment dwellers have that dilemma tell me about this grill that you're using here because this could actually be pretty good for tailgating too. It can be and, and really in the end whether you're in either outside or inside um, I use, this is a great, it's an electric grill that's in, in, inside appropriate. It has a grate on it, but also has a drip tray below it. I can still get that high heat and sear that I'm talking about. I can get grill marks on a steak that look cosmetically beautiful. 
So I can get a beautiful looking steak in this year we're talking about. Yeah, and then the great thing is, is you don't have any muzz or fuss when you want to wrap up at the end of the tailgate. You don't want to have to wait for the, the, the dump the briquettes dump somewhere or anything like that. Yes, yes, you're right. <clears throat> so here's here's your uh, here's the Barbara Walters question. Uh, you've got somebody special coming over for dinner. You want to serve up something really remarkable. What cut? What choice? What cut? Do you go with the porterhouse? Do you go with the sirloin? Do you go with the T-bone ribeye? What do you What are you going to serve to really uh, satisfy an important guest? You mentioned all great cuts that I love to put on the grill. My favorite is a ribeye, and if it's, hey, we're heading into Father's Day, the ribeye is going to be what I put on for my dad. It's the most robust, beefy flavor of all. But hey, if you're looking for a leaner, more economical cut, the sirloin is a great one and always available at Meyer. I can be adopted as your father. <laughs> that can happen. We'll do it. <laughs> yeah, sounds pretty good. Chef Mike Lowley, thanks so much from Certified Angus Beef. Uh, happy grilling and happy Father's Day. Likewise. I appreciate it.